Well, how can I describe PlayStation Portal to you? Well, very simple. Imagine someone that says, I would like you to come over for Netflix and chill, but I literally mean Netflix and chill. But then you're like, oh, I know, I know. There's more to this. And then you prepare and then you go and then, and then you, the other person's like, no, I literally meant Netflix and chill. That is PlayStation Portal. <laughs> Oh, I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. PlayStation Portal comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box, we're greeted with another box that is placed the wrong way. Inside the lid of that box, there is the USB cable. And underneath the portal, we find some papers. At first glance, PlayStation Portal looks gorgeous. I really like the design. It is like a dual sense stretch into a limousine. Joking aside, it's very much like a dual sense. It has haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, a light bar, mute button lights up as well. And at the back, we have speakers, microphone, volume, and wireless headphone pairing button for Sony's own wireless headphones. There's also a headphone jack and a USB-C charging port at the bottom, and they are placed really nicely so the cable doesn't get in the way while you're playing. The 8-inch screen is bright enough for indoors and it supports videos up to 1080p 60 frames per second. Other than that, there isn't any technical information about Portal on Sony's website, but we know it doesn't have Bluetooth, but it supports 5 GHz wireless connection. And let me tell you this, on November 30, 2023, they released an update for PlayStation Portal and I was working on this video long before that and the beginning of my video was going to be you know this is playstation portal but i'm probably returning this but after the update the beginning of my video is going to be this is playstation portal and i actually love this thing First of all, we have to understand what PlayStation Portal is. This is just a device that streams your PlayStation. And Sony is specifically saying that this is for your home. This is to be used on your home Wi-Fi. There's no mention of using this outside of your house. They're constantly saying this is for your home. You know, if the TV is taken and if you want to play PlayStation Portal, uh, you can do it on this device or let's say you want to watch TV you have kids that want to play games on PlayStation you can hand them the PlayStation portal and they can do that as well there's nothing else to it it doesn't have a browser it doesn't have a storage that is dedicated for you to use it has nothing it's just a controller to play casual games and let me tell you what PlayStation Portal is not. This thing is not an alternative to Steam Deck. Not at all. It may look the same, but it isn't. It is not a PSP, it's just a remote player. And I don't think this is a device that's gonna be comfortable if you wanna play games that requires fast lightning reflexes, like Call of Duty, or any games that you need to make quick decisions. If you wanna play Spider-Man, Grand Theft Auto, cyberpunk and stuff like that, that that is more sitting on the couch casual style games this thing is really good for that so then if this is not steam deck if this is not psp why should we even care well first of all this thing is very light there are no fans this thing doesn't heat up the battery life is really long and it becomes something you end up using Here's my theory about PlayStation Portal. I think when they first decided to make this product, they were thinking it was gonna do a lot more than what it is doing right now. Because even though they're saying you need to use this in home Wi-Fi, look what happens when I disconnect. Look what happens. There's, a, there's an airplane mode, first of all. If I turn that on, it says no internet connection. It doesn't say I'm not connected to your home Wi-Fi. 
or anything. By the way, as expected, you can still use your PlayStation portal when there's no internet connection. You just need the connection to your home Wi-Fi. And actually, you can use this when you're outside of your house. As long as you're connected to internet, this will connect to your PlayStation at home. And I tested this a lot. As you can see right now, I am somewhere else. I'm at my sister's place and I'm connected to my home PlayStation from her internet. And this is actually a lot of fun. Of course, the latency becomes a little higher, but games like Spider-Man, it seemed very manageable. But this is not mentioned on PlayStation Portal's page on PlayStation.com. But since it doesn't have a simple browser on it, if you want to connect to internet, let's say from Starbucks, the Starbucks Wi-Fi has that second verification page where you put your name and an address and a postal code to be able to access their Wi-Fi. Or imagine a hotel's Wi-Fi where you have to put in certain things to be accessing internet. You cannot do it with this because this doesn't have a simple browser or anything similar. But what you can do is you can connect to your phones. You can enable hotspot on your phone. But of course, when you do that, you're wasting two devices batteries. And of course, you're using the data on your phone because as soon as you turn on hotspot, your phone disconnects from Wi-Fi. So you cannot go to Starbucks and connect to Starbucks's Wi-Fi and then hotspot it so you can connect this to your phone and then the, the phone to the Starbucks Wi-Fi. That's not gonna work. And Portal, I cannot say this enough, just does what it says. There's nothing else to it. This USB-C port, doesn't do anything else. You cannot connect a USB-C to Ethernet connection there and then directly connect this to your uh, PlayStation for, you know, reducing latency. You cannot do anything like that. I bought this wireless USB-C thingy thinking I can maybe plug this down there and at least use it with my own headphones. Yes, that's another thing that we're going to talk about. But no, that doesn't work either. And it doesn't have Bluetooth and it only supports its own uh, head wireless headsets, but it has, of course, an audio out if you want to use that. The screen is touch screen, but only for its own menu. For example, if you go here, if I go here to, to go and go to search, and I have the keyboard activated here, as you can see, I cannot tap on that keyboard. It could have been a little more innovative and you know, let me use that keyboard with touch, but no. But did, did Sony promise any of these? No, and that's the thing. This is a device that can be so much more, but it isn't, it has such potential. You know how we discover more stuff on iPhones and other devices after we get them and then people make videos like, you know, hidden features and stuff like that. There's nothing hidden here. Whatever PlayStation Portal's page says, that's what PlayStation Portal does. But it could have been so much more. I would love it if I can just pinch in and out to what's going on in a game. I think that would help me a lot. I also would love to use this as a second screen if I choose to play a game on TV using PlayStation itself. With this remote, this remote can have some information that do not need to be displayed on the TV. Or let's say we're playing a split screen game with someone else. This can be the split screen. And let's say we're racing cars. One of us can race on the TV and the other one can race on this on the same PlayStation. But there may be limitations for that. But still, you know, it just, this thing just is ready for all those features. Battery level does not have a percentage in this view. You cannot see what's going on. But while you're charging, if this device is turned off, when you click on the power button, it shows you a percentage. But I would have preferred to see, like if I tap on it, show me the percentage, that would have been nice. But when it comes to battery life, the, the battery life of this is just fantastic. Let me look at my notes here. I started playing at half past five and it was almost nine, close to 10 p.m. in the night. That's when this thing died. 
has it has crazy good battery life. Of course, we have the DualSense adaptive triggers on this, and they just work perfect. They're really good. They're just like the DualSense, but these these little guys are not as firm. They're a lot looser compared to DualSense and compared to PlayStation VR 2's contro controllers. When it comes to speakers, the speakers are fine. It's nothing very impressive. If you're in a loud environment, when I was testing this when I was outside, I wasn't able to hear what was going on. It was really difficult. While listening to the speaker outdoors, we can also check out the latency over hotspot. These latency tests are relative and it should be compared to the same test done in different environments, which we will later on. Anyway, back to the speaker. And the funny thing is, it doesn't get super loud, but it doesn't get super quiet as well. So when I wanted to use this, you know, in bed, <laughs> it was a bad idea. Though, yeah, this is one of the things you cannot do uh, because the buttons are super loud. But other than that, the screen doesn't turn down enough, the screen brightness, and the audio doesn't turn down to a level where it's, you know, acceptable for the person sleeping next to you. So yeah, it failed in the in the bedroom department, if I may say so. <laughs> there is another problem this thing has, and that is a problem with HDR. I have a really nice Sony TV that my PlayStation is connected to, and of course my PlayStation is set to HDR and I play games in HDR. But when my PlayStation is set to HDR, the SDR version of that game streamed into this device is not good. What I mean by that is highlights are just blown out. I have many examples of this. And to fix that, you gotta go to your PlayStation settings and turn HDR off. But the problem is you cannot go to your PlayStation settings from portal. So you gotta switch back to the regular controller, go to your TV and then turn it off, which is something of course I'm not gonna do because I don't wanna change the settings for the TV. Okay, so this is when uh, HDR is turned on on the TV. Look at the sun, okay. Now I'm gonna turn the HDR off. Now look at the sun. This becomes quite annoying during some scenes because the image on portal screen becomes completely washed out and it literally stops you from playing the game. If I go to media here, I cannot watch anything. I cannot watch YouTube. I cannot listen to Spotify. I cannot watch my videos from here in the media section. I gotta go to games and watch my own videos. But interestingly, if I go here, the Last of Us soundtrack thingy that I downloaded, I can listen to the soundtrack fine. But anything in this media, you cannot, you cannot access it. But you can watch game trailers and stuff like that if you're curious under, under PlayStation Store. All of those work fine. Of course, you cannot turn on your PlayStation if it is not in rest mode, if it is turned off. So you have to go and turn it on with the PlayStation button on your remote, which is bizarre because of course we have a PlayStation button here. And if this is meant to be in the house, why doesn't this PlayStation button turn on the PlayStation is a question I have. I'm sure you have that same question. Let's say there are multiple profiles on your PlayStation and if someone else is playing a game and then they put the PlayStation in the rest mode, when you try to turn PlayStation on with your profile, uh, sometimes you need to turn it on and then wait for PlayStation to turn off by itself. This is a bug. I hope it gets fixed. And then when PlayStation goes back to sleep and then you turn it back on with your remote, then it allows you to log in as yourself. Otherwise, 
on the TV screen it says like who's using this PlayStation. It doesn't skip that uh, window and you can now log in with your PlayStation. Which now brings us to the users on PlayStation Portal. You cannot have multiple users on PlayStation Portal. There's only you. Uh, you can log out and someone else can log in. You can sign out and someone else can sign in and that's how uh, they can. So if I give this to my wife to play, she has to log out and then log in with this. So even though it's streaming from PlayStation, it doesn't support, it, it didn't import the users on PlayStation to this. And it doesn't stop there as well. This is, a, this is an interesting thing. If someone else is playing PlayStation, I can turn this on and I can start watching them on my screen. I, I can stream what they're playing on my screen. And of course the buttons and stuff doesn't work except for screen capture and PlayStation button. So while they're playing a game, I can, <laughs> I can pause their game by hitting those buttons. But the other buttons do not work. Now, of course, the design of PlayStation Portal is seriously be beautiful. Sometimes I wish the screen was on top of the regular remote controller like this, like a drone remote. But I think this is a lot better because of the center of weight. And so when, you, when this is in your hand and you're playing for a long time, everything feels sturdy. I don't think this is gonna break easily. I hope not. But the problem is because of this awkward shape, this is a little difficult to carry around. I know it's not meant to carry around. I know it's meant to be in the house, but still, I took it to my sisters and then played games over there. It's not easy to carry, yeah. Now let's talk about the most important thing, of course, when it comes to this, the latency. And I made a lot of tests when it comes to latency before the software update and after the software update. And I can tell you that it changed quite a lot. Before it was really bizarre, there was more lag. And uh, we were discussing about this on threads and some people were saying the latency is gonna change if the TV is on or off. And I tested this a couple of times. Before the update, interestingly, the latency was worse when the TV was off. So now let's go back to the Last of Us test. While we tested the latency over iPhone's hotspot, the latency was around 580 milliseconds. Let's see what happens over home Wi-Fi. The TV is off, and I'm gonna do it 10 times. I tested tons of scenarios to see if I can find any differences in latency. I also would like to mention that on my router settings, I gave priority to Portal and PS5. PS5 is hardwired to my router. I tested to see what happens when the TV is off or on and after the update there seems to be no difference if the TV is off or on. After that I tested to see if there are any differences when the portal is connected directly to PlayStation via USB-C, there isn't. Then I tested the latency of portal as a controller if you choose to play it on TV. Then I compared the latency if portal is connected via cable or wireless. Then I compared that to DualSense controller, then compared that to DualSense when it's hardwired to PlayStation. After these long tests, I can tell you that home Wi-Fi is of course a lot faster even compared to one gigabyte wireless hotspot connection. There's no difference if the TV is on or off. There's no difference if you connect Portal to PlayStation 5 via USB-C or not. Portal's latency is same as DualSense and when you hardwire DualSense to PlayStation, the latency doesn't change, but I bet the quality of the connection gets better. Then I asked my nine-year-old niece, what her experience was with PlayStation Portal. It kind of felt like I was playing with an iPad, but on the PlayStation at the same time. It definitely feels different from a normal PlayStation, but it was comfortable. And while you were playing the game, do you think the game was as difficult as it is normally, or did you think the game was somehow a little bit more difficult? I think it was the same. It was the same, okay. So if you were playing on a regular PlayStation, the game would be as difficult as it is that you experienced on PlayStation Portal. Yes. Do you have anything 
that you didn't like? No, I think it was perfect. No? I love it. And then I asked this random citizen about her thoughts on PlayStation Portal. Um, I, I like it fine. I, I, it was, you know, I could play my game. And there were some weird uh, graphic issues. Every time I was doing anything besides standing still, the quality would drop pretty significantly, which made it difficult to perform some tasks like aiming at an enemy and shooting an enemy. And when I was driving, I couldn't always see certain elements like a boulder on the road because the quality got so low that I couldn't really make everything out properly. I'm also not a big fan of smaller screens anyway. So just as a starting point, I'm, I'm not a fan of a small screen for games. And there was a lag that wasn't too noticeable in my gameplay, except when I was chasing some, like I was trying to shoot someone who was running. And even though I'm certain I was getting them, they weren't getting hit. So that felt like it was a lag thing because it's just enough lag that that would make sense. I would, I'd probably play on the, on the portal. If I really wanted to play the game and I had nothing else to do, I would I'd choose to play the portal. No, okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I played a lot of games using this and I enjoyed Spider-Man quite a lot. I enjoyed GTA quite a lot. I like doing weird stuff in GTA like drive against the traffic. And when you want to do that, you can tell that there's a latency thingy going on it's not as simple as just playing on playstation itself and in some situations when you want to do acrobatics like that when i switch back to playstation everything felt so much better so much better but if you want to just lay in your bed or just you know sit on the couch casual gaming you're not really 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 you know trying to go through cars in the oncoming traffic then yeah that it's a lot of fun but every once in a while this is the wireless signal it it's not constant sometimes stuff happens and then it freezes especially when you're swinging between buildings in spider-man and then you find yourself somewhere it's, you know also if you do stuff that requires the same the scene to change quite fast let's say you jumped suddenly in spider-man and the scene has to change that fast that means more data has to be streamed to your device. You know what happens when you watch a confetti on YouTube? You know how the image quality goes down? Same thing happens on PlayStation Portal because it's streamed and the bitrate goes up and they cannot keep up with that bitrate. So the image gets a little mushy or a little blurry. Okay, so at this point, am I returning this? Well, after I played 10 minutes with this in the very beginning after I took it out of its box and, box and played 10 minutes I almost just put it in the box and go back and return immediately but then I thought hey maybe I can make a video uh, and I am really happy that I kept that firmware update really changed everything that firmware update was a life changer because before the firmware update for example while you were charging this it was turning on and off by itself it had other weird stuff too and all of that is gone now but yeah, if you're upset about this, I feel you. Because this has such potential. Um, maybe in the second version, they're gonna put those into the device. But as is, it is fun. It is fun, I have no problem with it. Well, yeah, so thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about PlayStation Portal. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something you'll be picking up? Let me know and um, until I see you next time, take really good care of yourselves and host Chuckle